Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to our today's class. It is our third lesson on the sixth topic of Form 3 work, which is called Waves 2. So, as usual, let me comment by giving the quote of the day, which states that, Utilize your chances now, because sometimes later becomes never. So today we are looking at the fourth property of wave, which is called interference of waves. Remember, we looked at the first property of wave, which was a reflection. We looked at the second property, which was refraction. The third property was diffraction. And now we are looking at the fourth and the final property, which is called interference of waves. So interference of waves simply refers to, uh, that is, it occurs when two waves merge. To merge is simply to add up or to combine. So um, interference of waves occurs when two waves merge and the result can either be a much larger wave, a smaller wave or no wave at all. Then we have uh, two types of interference. One we have uh, what we call constructive interference and two we have what we call destructive interference of waves. So that is for constructive interference, the waves usually travel in the same direction and are in phase adding up to um, a bigger wave. In case you have a challenge in understanding what we mean by the waves being in phase, you can just review our lessons on uh, waves one, which was a form two, uh, a form two topic. We actually differentiated between what we call uh, the phase. That is, we showed uh, what we mean by waves being in phase and waves being out of phase. So, in case you have challenges in differentiating between the two, just uh, review our lessons on waves one. So we are saying that in constructive interference, the waves usually travel in the same direction and are usually in phase adding up to a, a bigger wave. That is in constructive interference, a crest meets a crest or a trough can also combine with another trough. So let's look at uh, case scenarios here. So in this particular case, we have our first wave which is traveling uh, in this particular direction. That is the starting point is the upper part. So we have our first crest here. So the first wave is starting with a, a crest on the positive direction of our displacement. Then we also have a second wave, which is also starting on the positive uh, side of our displacement. So these particular waves, they have the same amplitude. That is an amplitude of two. This one also has an amplitude of two. And they're also traveling in the same direction. That is towards the right hand side direction. So these particular waves, they have the same amplitude, they have the same period, they have the same frequency, and therefore they are traveling in the same direction, and therefore they are said to be in phase. So when these two waves are combined, or when the waves merge, or when they add up, they will give us a much larger wave. For example, in this case, we are taking a wave which has an amplitude of positive 2, and also another wave which has an amplitude of 2. So 2 plus 2, they will give us a wave which has an amplitude of four. So two, you add to an amplitude of two, you will simply get a positive four. So in this particular case, we are getting a much larger wave, which is a combination of the first wave and the uh, second wave. So in this particular case, we are having a crest meeting with a crest. That is the crest of the first wave combines with the crest of the second wave to give us a much larger crest, which has an amplitude of four, which is a combination of two plus two, which gives us an amplitude of four. So actually, this is what we call constructive interference. That is, the two waves meet and they merge to give us a large, uh, merger, that is, a large wave. For example, in a case scenario, you can have maybe a sound wave. You have two speakers are aligned in such a way that the waves are traveling in the same direction and they are in phase. So if one of the speakers was giving you a volume of maybe um, 20, so the two speakers will give you a volume of 20 plus 20, which is 40. That is, the waves combine to give you a much larger wave. Similarly, in light waves, if you have maybe a, a light of intensity of maybe uh, 10 hertz, then they combine. So you have two similar um, sources of light traveling the same direction. That is 10 hertz plus 10 hertz. They will give you a much brighter light of 10 plus 10, which is actually 20 hertz. So that is what we mean by constructive interference. The waves meet, that is they merge, and they give us a much larger wave because they are in phase and they are traveling in the same direction. Then we have uh, the second type of interference, which is destructive interference. So here, the waves cancel each other, provided that the two waves are out of phase. Again, we differentiated between the waves being in phase and the waves being out of phase. In case you have 
any challenge in understanding that, you can just review our lessons on waves one, whereby we showed how waves are being in phase, we mean by that. So here, the crest cancels a trough, or a trough cancels a crest. So let's look at a, a case scenario. So remember, under destructive interference, we can have two results. We can have the resultant wave being a much smaller wave, or the resultant wave being no wave, or having a totally a total no wave. But for constructive interference, that one will always give us a much larger wave. So let's look at the first case of destructive interference. So we are having a crest cancelling a trough. So we have our first wave here, which is uh, starting to travel in the negative direction of our um, displacement. So in this particular case, so the first wave starts with a, a trough. Then the second wave is starting in the positive direction of our displacement. Therefore, the second wave is starting with a crest. So if you combine the first wave and the second wave, this particular trough, it will uh, cancel this particular uh, crest. So a crest cancels a trough. But remember for this case, we had a crest meeting a crest. So the first crest combines with the second crest to give us a much larger crest. Then the first trough combines with the, the first trough to give us a much larger trough. That was in constructive interference. But for destructive interference, we are having a trough uh, meeting with a crest. Of course, they will cancel each other. So if we have a trough of amplitude, let's say negative 2, combining with a, a crest of an amplitude of positive 3, so of course negative 2 plus 3, you'll end up with positive 1. So the resultant wave will have a crest of positive 1. So the crest of uh, positive 3 has been cancelled by a trough of negative 2. So positive 2, that is positive 3 minus 2, you'll end up with a positive 1. So the resultant wave is a much smaller wave. So this is a case scenario whereby we are having a resultant wave which is a much smaller wave. So you can see this particular wave, the resultant wave is very much smaller as compared to our incident waves. Yeah, this is whereby maybe you have two speakers, and then the speakers are producing the waves which are out of phase, such that if the first speaker maybe had a volume of two, then the second speaker had a volume of three. So if they, uh, they produce waves which are out of phase, the waves will cancel each other so that you end up with a combined or a resultant volume of one only. Then you also have another second scenario that is for the destructive interference whereby we are ending up with a resultant wave of zero. So in this case, we have an incident wave which has an amplitude of, uh, that is, which has negative two or which is starting with a, a trough of uh, amplitude of negative two. Then we are having the second wave which is starting with a crest of an amplitude of positive two. So of course, if you combine a trough of negative two with a crest of positive two, you'll end up with a, a total wave of zero. So the waves are out of phase because this one is starting from the negative direction while this one is starting from the positive direction or this one is starting with a trough while the other wave is starting with a crest. So if a crest combines with a trough, we'll end up with a, a total wave of zero. So negative two plus two will end up with this particular wave. So we have just combined the second wave uh, and the first wave. So at this particular point whereby we have positive two plus negative two, you just get zero. Therefore, the total wave will have an amplitude of zero. So this is what we call cancelling of waves. That is in destructive interference, the waves cancel each other. So a trough, a crest, this particular crest cancels this particular trough so that the resultant amplitude will be positive two plus negative two, which gives us a resultant wave of zero. So that is what we call destructive interference. Next, Next, we look at interference in sound waves. So interference in sound waves leads to production of soft and loud sound. So soft sound is just a, a sound of smaller volume and loud sound, of course, is uh, the sound of a larger volume. So there is a way in which you can connect your speakers in such a way that they produce sounds which are uh, uh, forming constructive waves to give you a much louder sound. Then whenever speakers are connected in such a way that they produce sound, which is of um, waves which are interfering destructively, then in that case we shall have a low sound or what we are calling a soft sound. So a, a soft sound occurs when sound waves interfere destructively, while um, loud sound occurs when uh, sound waves interfere, that is, constructively. They interfere constructively. 
So interference in sound waves can be demonstrated using the setup below. So we have an audio frequency generator, which is giving us uh, the sound waves, which have the same frequency and of course, uh, which are in phase. So we have the first speaker here and the second speaker in this particular case. So an observer walking along path X, Y. So remember, this is our path X to Y. So if an observer walks along this particular path, he or she will experience alternate loud sound that is at point C. So point C simply represents regions of uh, constructive interference. So if an observer walks along the path X, Y, he will experience alternate loud sound that is at point C and also uh, soft sound. So at this particular point C, so you can see this is our point C. So in this particular case, we have a constructive interference. So which occurs when that is constructive interference of, of sound waves. Uh, that is where a crest of one wave meets a crest of another wave. And of course, also the trough of one wave meets the trough of another wave, combining to give us a much larger wave. So between point C, we shall have what we call a loud sound because there is constructive interference of the waves. So the waves meet in such a way that, that is the sound waves from the two speakers, they meet in such a way that they combine to give us a much larger wave. So if you are told to explain, the to state the observation uh, that will be experienced when an observer moves from point X to Y, you simply say, we shall have alternate loud and soft sound. Then loud sound will occur at region C, that is at this particular regions which we are labeling as C. So at region C, these are regions of constructive interference whereby a constructive interference of sound waves whereby a crest of one wave meets a crest of another wave or a trough of one wave meets a trough of another wave. So again, between point X and Y, we shall also have what we call soft sound. That is the soft sound I've produced at point D. So D simply stands for destructive interference or regions of destructive interference interference or regions at whereby the waves meet in such a way that they cancel each other. So at point D, where we are having destructive interference of sound waves, this is whereby a, the crest of one wave meets a trough of another wave in such a way that they cancel each other. So the expected observation is that uh, an observer moving a, a, along point X and Y will experience uh, alternate constructive and destructive interference as indicated by our letter C D, C, and D. So the reason is because, the reason for soft sound or for soft sound is because of destructive interference whereby the waves cancel each, each other. And the reason for loud sound is because of uh, constructive interference whereby the waves merge to give us a much larger uh, wave. So you can see at point D, this is how the waves meet. So this is the resultant wave. One of the wave travels in the, in the negative direction while the other one in the positive direction. And of course, they are out of phase, therefore they cancel each other so that the result is a soft sound. But for constructive interference, the two waves merge or they combine to give us a large merger, uh, that is a large wave. So in that case, we are having what we call constructive interference. Then if we have an observer walking along path OC, so remember path OC is simply, so from O to C is simply equidistant or it is the distance which is, if you take that, it is the midpoint of these particular two speakers. If you measure the distance from O to the speaker, assuming if that distance is maybe two centimeters, then the distance from um, our line OC to the other speaker should be two centimeters. So OC is simply a line which is uh, equidistant or it is the midpoint of these particular two speakers. So if an observer walks along OC, a loud sound is heard all through. So this is the locus of points equidistant, that is at equal distance from the two sources of the sound. So when the, we have a line equidistant from the two so sources of sound, this is whereby the path difference is zero and constructive interference occurs all through. So between regions, between a long line OC, you'll just hear a louder sound because we are the two waves from the two speakers, they meet in such a way that we have constructive interference. Therefore, the two waves, they merge to give us a much larger wave. They give us a large, larger wave. So in this particular case, you just need to know the expected observation and be in a position to explain. So if you are asked to state the observation made when an observer moves from point uh, X to Y, 
Remember when we talk of observation in uh, sciences, we simply mean what you can um, either hear, what you can see, or what you can test. That is something that ad adheres to your senses. So in this case, it is about the observation is about what we can hear. So if an observer moves along, along point X and Y, he will hear alternating loud and soft sound. So and at region C, he will hear a loud sound where we have constructive interference, but at region D, he will hear soft sound. That is where we have destructive interference. Yeah. So that is the observation. So he will observe loud and soft sound, which are alternating. So the reason for the loud sound is because of the constructive interference of sound waves, whereby a crest of one wave meets a crest of another wave. The explanation for the soft sound that is at regions D is because of the destructive interference of sound waves, whereby a crest of one wave meets a, a trough of another wave. Then you'll be asked to state the observation when an observer moves along point OC. So the observation is that he or she will simply hear a loud sound is heard all through. He will hear a loud sound all through. The reason for that or the explanation is because this is the locus of point, that is the line OC is a locus of points equidistant from the two uh, sources of sound whereby the path difference is zero and constructive interference occurs all through. Constructive interference occurs all through. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that utilize your chances now because sometimes later becomes never. So the quote is reminding us that real life is made up of temporary seasons. Therefore, we should purpose to utilize well every opportunity that is brought about by each season. Recall that your success or failure in the next season of your life depends so much on the results and the lessons that you learn from your previous seasons. Therefore, we should not be in a hurry to skip each season without picking the lessons that uh, that particular season intended to teach us. And lastly, recall that no condition is permanent in life. We just have to do our best in our current seasons and hope for a better tomorrow. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the, the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. In case you know any student or anyone that, that you honestly think could benefit from this content, kindly share my link to them or just refer them to Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you for the continued support. I really, really appreciate. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy.